Carbocation rearrangement is very common in organic chemistry. There are two types of carbocation rearrangement, hydride shift and methyl shift. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between these two and what will drive these type of rearrangement. First of all, there are two types of arrangement, as we said. The first one is the hydride shift, and the second type is a methyl shift. In hydride shift, hydrogen with a negative charge or a hydride is shifted to adjacent carbon to give a more stable carbocation. We know that tertiary carbocation is more stable than secondary carbocation, which is more stable than primary carbocation. So if there is a primary or secondary carbocation that is generated in the reaction and that's adjacent to a tertiary carbon, then hydride will be shifted from the tertiary carbon to the adjacent carbocation primary or secondary to generate a more stable tertiary carbocation. Something like this one where we have the this is a secondary carbocation and then we have a hydrogen here on this tertiary uh, carbon and then the hydride can be shifted towards this carbocation to generate the more stable one. Methyl shift is exactly the same however in this case a methyl group is the one that is going to be shifted with a negative charge to the adjacent carbon also to give the more stable carbocation. We see that when we have a primary or secondary carbocation adjacent to a quaternary carbon. So in this case, as we can see, there is a secondary carbocation here, and then we had a, a quaternary carbon adjacent to it, so the methyl can be shifted to generate the more stable carbocation. So let's have at, um, a closer look at the type of reactions that will show these types of rearrangement. First one is the SN1 reactions, where we can see the hydride and the methyl shift. The first step in the SN1 um, reaction is the carbocation formation. So we have here 3 bromo, 3 methyl butane, and this is a secondary alkyl halide, where the first step in the reaction is uh, the generation of the carbocation. Here the bromide will leave, and a secondary carbocation is generated here. However, this secondary carbocation adjacent to it, there is a tertiary carbon. So the second step, which is going to be a fast step, will be the hydride shift from the adjacent carbon, tertiary carbon, towards the, uh, car the secondary carbocation. That will then generate a tertiary carbocation on the adjacent carbon, and this is more stable carbocation. So the following step in the SN1 reaction will be the nucleophilic attack. So have your nucleophile, which could be water, for example, the water will attack the tertiary carbocation and that will generate the other intermediate and finally the deprotonation from the water to give you the tertiary alcohol. So you end up with the tertiary alcohol rather than ending up with the secondary alcohol. We can also see methyl shift in SN1 reaction in the same way. So the first step will be the carbocation formation as well, where the bromide will leave. This is the slow step, and that will generate the secondary carbocation. And then we will see that this secondary carbocation that has adjacent to it, there is a quaternary carbon here. This is the quaternary carbon. There will be a methyl shift where this methyl group will be shifted towards the secondary carbocation that will generate a quaternary carbocation, uh, um, a tertiary carbocation on the adjacent carbon. So this is a more stable carbocation that will be generated. And then the next step, as we know, for SN1 reaction will be the nucleophilic attack. So this is the nucleophile water will attack the tertiary uh, carbocation or the tertiary carbon. And that will give us the final product after the deprotonation step, which is the tertiary alcohol rather than the secondary alcohol. We can also see these hydride and methyl shift in addition reaction, electrophilic addition reaction to uh, uh, alkenes. So the and the alkenes also the first step will be the electrophilic addition will be the carbocation formation. So here we have an alkene and we 
we have hydrogen bromide. So there will be an, uh, the first step will be the electrophilic addition of the electrophile, which is the hydrogen from hydrogen bromide. Well, the nucleophile here, which is the double bond, will attack the hydrogen and the bromide will leave as a bromide with a negative charge. That will generate the secondary carbocation. Of course, we know according to Markankov rule, the hydrogen will be added to the carbon that has more hydrogen atoms. So this is carbon number one and the carbocation will be generated on carbon number two because this is more stable. But then this secondary carbocation adjacent to it, there is a quaternary carbon. So this is, this is a fast step where a methyl shift will be seen here. So a methyl group will move from the quaternary carbon to the, car the secondary carbocation and that will generate a, a tertiary carbocation on this carbon, which is more stable. And finally, the last step for the addition will be the nucleophilic attack will the bromide that was left in the first step will then uh, attack the tertiary uh, carbon, the carbocation, and that will generate the tertiary alkyl halide instead of the secondary alkyl halide.